these children here, undoubtedly. <laughs> But many of us remember there are three networks, and there is, you know, on Sunday night you're watching Hee Haw because the other two things are worse. <laughs> and, and so there's a very, very, very limited slot. And because the slot was so small, and because the cost of broadcasting a signal was so high, that the, the pairing away was literally it was worse than pro sports, honestly. I mean, there, there are hundreds of players in the NFL, there were maybe 20 people who were doing political commentary back in the day. So along comes the internet, and when I decided to come back from Arlington National Cemetery and write about my experience, I wrote a letter to a guy who had a blog, a guy named Stephen Denbest, who's not, not in the political game anymore, but he had a blog called USS Clueless, and, uh, and he was writing about the Iraq war, and he was doing analysis of the Iraqi army, analysis of US military doctrine, that was better than anything that was coming out of any strategic think tank in Washington. And I told him about what happened uh, on my day out in Arlington. He said, can I publish it? He said, yes, and it went up on his main page. He got seen by 200,000 people, and people are saying, man, you really ought to get in this business. So I started a blog called Eject, 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 mm -hmm. and I was one of four million blogs that started that year. Four million. There's a, a website still out there called Blogger. You just simply decide you want to write a blog, you can start it for free. Now, four million blogs in one year, 3,999,000 of them are talking about what they did with their cats that day or a new recipe for brownies or something, but cat vlogs do okay too. But the point I'm trying to make is this, the entrance cost was zero. The field was perfectly level and almost infinitely large, which meant that there were millions of people, millions of people writing about what was on their mind. So the question is, why am I standing here and those other four million people not? I'm a little uncomfortable talking about this, but ultimately when you think about new media, it really does come down to, do you have something worth saying? Well, everybody has something worth saying. Do you have something that other people are interested in listening in? Do you have anything that they're interested in listening about? And everybody was writing a blog post, and a blog post is traditionally, it's a paragraph. Uh, well, I don't believe this Eric Weiner thing, my God, what, a, what an outrage. That's a blog post. I was writing 15,000 word essays on things like honor, courage, responsibility, uh, power, and trying to connect things in a way that hopefully at least made some sense for me. But the important thing that you need to understand if you're interested in getting into this, this game, and you need to get into this game, is that I wasn't writing for anybody but myself. I, I, I didn't have an audience, I didn't have a paycheck, I didn't have an agenda. I just was writing about what was important to me, and because I cared about it, I put my heart into it. I got some lucky breaks with people like Glenn Reynolds at Instapun and other people who, who, who liked what I wrote and promoted it. And links and hits, incoming hits, are the, are the lifeblood of a blogger because you're not getting paid and, and you're not doing it just for yourself. When all of a sudden you're getting 20, 30 hits a day or 100 hits a day or 2,000 hits a day, you start to work up and then Glenn Reynolds puts you on the main page, you get what's called, a, he has a site called Instapundit, you get an Instalanch, and all of a sudden 10,000 hits an hour, 20,000 hits an hour, and you, you, 200,000 people have read what you wrote. It didn't cost you anything to write it, it didn't cost them anything to read it. It's just suddenly there are 200,000 people. I was at a football game uh, uh, back in uh, Florida, at Florida Field. They said, today's attendance is 110,916. I looked around and I said, my God, three times as many people read this last thing I wrote. It didn't cost me a penny. It didn't cost them a penny. So the internet is infinitely large, infinitely flat. Anybody can get in. But you've got to have something to say. And before I turn over to my uh, compatriots here, I had a lot to say as a writer, and when PJTV came along, they asked me if I wanted to come and do uh, some work for them, and I hadn't done any on-camera commentary. Uh, I did a little bit of acting in college and high school. But I just walked into it, and I was comfortable with it, and I started doing it. So I want to just very briefly tell you about the difference between written commentary and, uh, and on-camera commentary. Uh, they're going to talk a little more about journalism. I'm more of an opinion guy. When you write something, it's your job to try to make it evocative. It's a job to make it interesting and visual and, 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 and put an arc on it and some kind of story. Video gives you two enormous advantages right out of, the, out of the gate. First of all, you can be a lot more passionate about things in video, and your passion or your excitement is much more obvious. So there's, there's that entire aspect of, I really care about this, and people can see it on your face. So if you're going to do it, you better care. And the fact that you're here at the Eagle Forum means you care, so we're already over that obstacle. The second thing that video allows you to do is video, they're not kidding about a picture that's worth a thousand words, and video consists of 30 pictures a second, so you put one second of video up there, there's 30,000 words. Uh, the ability of video 
to show people rather than tell people is, in, uh, I'll just reduce it to what it really comes down to, it's information processing three orders of magnitude, right? In other words, if you show a picture of a burning building on 9-11, that connects to people in a way that 30,000 words about that building will never connect to them on. So here we have a little video camera, little video cameras around the world. I've got an iPhone that shoots high definition video, HD video. This little iPhone shoots better quality video than a camera that would be the size of this table five, ten years ago. So the tools are out there. The editing software is often included in a, in a Macintosh computer or a PC. Uh, YouTube is free. It's uploadable. There's very easy tutorials on how to do it. You can go out there today and for the cost of a $200 camera or an iPhone, you can make the same kind of videos that I make or that, that, that uh, James makes, Christian makes. You can go out and do it. They do the kind of journalism that what, what James and, and Christian do is they do the kind of journalism that journalism is supposed to be about. I thought that the press treated uh, George Bush very unfairly and Sarah Palin disgustingly unfairly. But with that said, that's their job. The press's job is to go after these people and poke and poke and poke and poke and poke. So while I think that they're out of balance in that regard, I at least think that that's their job. But what James have shown, has shown and everybody else knows is that the press will not do that to Barack Obama. They won't do it to any Democrat. The press is no longer in the news business. They're in the news suppression business. And just prior to the last election, uh, to the presidential election, the LA Times had video of Barack Obama at a fundraiser for a Palestinian activist and they refused to release it. The news organization, the news organization had the video of a potential candidate for the President of the United States and they refused to release the video. So the question you have to ask yourself is, if they're not going to do their job, who is going to do their job? The press is the immune system for a healthy political body. All kinds of political bodies, our political system, every political system gets infections. The infections are corruption, lies, under the table dealings, all these things, kind of things that, that James and, and Christian point out. All bodies are infected by foreign objects and a healthy body has a, an immune system that defeats these things and keeps the body healthy. The press should be our immune system. It's the press's job to dig this stuff out. I don't think it's appropriate that they're digging through 30,000 Sarah Palin emails and farming it out to the public, but ultimately that is what they're supposed to do. They're supposed to be looking for cover-ups, corruption, lies, and so on. But when the press won't do that to the President of the United States, to the most powerful man in the world, when the press simply says, we are not going to look at this, we're going to let this go, just take our word for it, everything's fine then we have got a case of political AIDS. That's what we've got in this country now. We've got AIDS. We have a body with no immune system protecting us against lies. So what do we do about it? We either allow ourselves to go down the same path as every other civilization in history because this is the disease that kills civilizations, is this sense of affluence, prosperity, security, what can go wrong, take our word for it, everything's fine, the elites will handle everything, don't worry, we've got it covered, you guys don't have to worry about it, they let us handle it, we go to Harvard after all. We can either go down that road or we can step up and do the job that immune system needs to do, and that means citizen journalists. Now citizen journalists would have been a would have been a non sequitur, even 10 years ago. So what if you're a citizen journalist? You've got a video camera, congratulations. You've got a picture of a senator doing something naughty. Great, what's that going to do? You're going to show it to your friends at a cocktail party? Big deal. But now, if you get that video, as, again, as James did, or if you have something you want to say, for zero cost, and I'm talking $100, $200, you can have that video go to the entire world. Billions of people will watch, billions. So this is the great challenge, and it's also the great problem infinitely large, infinitely flat playing field that anybody can get into, and then it's simply up to you to do the job that the professionals used to do and won't do any longer, and if you don't do the job, we're done. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. Um, I've got a DVD collection.